Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. James Truchard. Good morning. Welcome to NI Week 2010. In this conference, we're going to focus on time, time for innovation, time in our products to better integrate and build these very powerful systems. Welcome. Once again, a record uh, attendance, a record number of applications you're doing, exciting things happening. And we look forward to seeing all your interesting applications. Speaking of time, I'd uh, like to uh, talk a little bit before I go into uh, our products about innovation. Uh, time Magazine uh, recently ran an article on Edison, who's been our role model for innovation certainly one of the most innovative and inventive persons that's ever lived. So he can be an inspiration for us. He, he uh, proposed that he could do a minor invention every 10 days and a big thing every six months or so. When I saw that article, it, I, it really, I was really drawn to the connection between what you're doing with our products and what Edison did. I'm sure we have a minor invention every day somewhere around the globe that you're doing with our products and a big thing every month or so. So we've really been able to create an ecosystem for innovation and it's built on these platforms. So if you look at what Edison did, it's mind-boggling. This is a page that was reproduced in a Time article uh, of the things he was doing, the phonograph, a battery for telephones, which persisted for many, many years, a very, very uh, widely used in telephone systems, all these incredible inventions, all in a very short period of time. So that's an inspiration for us. And so I was just drawn to the parallel of what you're doing and what Edison had done. So uh, we last year spoke about the engineering grand challenges. Yes, there are unsolved problems. As a matter of fact, some people speak very direly about uh, carbon and uh, global warming and all these things. Uh, we do have ch challenges that are very, very demanding that we have to work on. To, uh, and so as we spoke of last year, we were involved in every one of them. So I made a list of the things you guys are doing, <laughs> just to kind of keep it in context there. And it is amazing. It's truly amazing. You are the inventors of our time. You are making these incredible inventions using LabVIEW, Serio, and PXI. Just to hi a highlight a few, test. Using Moore's law in our technology, you're driving costs and size with zero footprint uh, ATE systems uh, uh, with the technology. With the uh, oil leak detection, sub-ocean oil leak detection in pipes, again, our technology is being applied to do some incredible things. And the smart grid analyzer, you can see it on the floor uh, in, in our trade show booth, the smart grid analyzer, once again, setting the stage for a new way to do the grid where power is generated from multiple sources and yet we can protect the integrity of the overall transmission grid while we're doing that. And uh, finally, one of my favorites, uh, even though it's controversial, uh, fracturing, or fracturing uh, for uh, natural gas from shale. My statement is, if we use this and use it widely enough, we can r substantially reduce our carbon footprint in the meanwhile we're waiting for that fusion power to come online. So basically, uh, this is a, a, an idea that is practical. Uh, folks are using Compact Rio for load leveling of the big powerful pumps that's pumping the fluid. There is controversy around it, so we have to make sure we're doing good measurements. 
to validate and verify that we are working in a safe way. We know the role of measurements and equipment monitoring. We saw some gaps in that uh, recently in the Gulf where it wasn't enough measurements, wasn't enough monitoring to make the right things happening. So we'd certainly have to do that. I'd like to talk today about how Moore's Law has really been the wind behind our backs, making it possible for us to deliver this level of technology in these uh, platforms. We've enjoyed two very important curves for Moore's Law. One is in the PC processing power of the microprocessors used in PCs. The performance has increased tremendously over the time period we, since LabVIEW was first in, introduced. The second one is uh, uh, Moore's, uh, second uh, component that's writing Moore's Law are FPGAs. And over the last year, since we first uh, introduced our Rio technology, FPGAs have substantially improved in performance. And we can bring this performance through software uh, um, technology to the, uh, your benefit, and that's what we're working to do. So if you uh, look at Moore's Law, people say, well, is it going to continue? Well, Intel assures us that it's got years to go. And that's wind behind our back that enables us to do more with more uh, performance, lower cost, and lower power every year. If you look at the uh, history of instrument modular instrumentation, in the late 80s, we introduced the VXI products. Well, these were, uh, and, and with time, we've introduced PXI and CREO. In the meantime, the size of a transistor has decreased by a factor of more than 2,000. So it seemed like instrumentation should be inter uh, decreasing in size as well. So at National Instruments, it has. We introduced PXI, a very demanding f in form factor for design, but we can deliver Moore's Law with P PXI. And what did we do next? We introduced even a smaller size with our C-series, taking advantage once again of the integration of analog to digital converters and the like to create yet a smaller form factor. So Moore's Law has been very kind to us in what we've been able to do for instrumentation. Now, there's a catch. Every time uh, things move to the next level, you have to have software that maintains compatibility over those uh, generations of products. So our GPIB works in the, the different form factors with PXI as well as VXI and traditional instruments with desktop computers. So we've maintained that compatibility so we can continue to use your applications you've created. But we've added software to support this hardware as we've downsized it, taken advantage of greater performance and a smaller form factor. And that continuity, just like the continuity of desktop PC software, enables Moore's Law to be effective. If you don't use an approach where the software drives long-term compatibility, you end up spending so much time redoing your software, you never truly get the full advantage of Moore's Law. So for us, the software has played a key role in our ability to deliver Moore's Law over a long period of time. So last year, we had a T-shirt that said, do more with LabVIEW. I would like to suggest that we could make this t-shirt say, do Moore's Law with LabVIEW. <laughs> so. LabVIEW delivers the integration platform that truly assures that we can fully take advantage of Moore's Law. So we've, seen, uh, we've talked about K true rocket science, science, kindergarten to the most complex physics applications. And once again, we have a, a, a physics uh, uh, meeting here where we're talking about some of the biggest and toughest challenges on the planet. And by this integration that we create with LabVIEW across multi-core, across distributed systems, we can make ever more powerful 
uh, systems, integrating time in it as well, in hardware and software. This is all about system level design, making a platform that increases the productivity and efficiency of your design, uh, where a small team can do a lot more. So uh, here's a way, uh, some years ago, I talked about the return of Edison, how we can create a platform that instead of needing this uh, very large team, and over time the teams got larger and larger and larger uh, to build these systems because of the complexity of detailed design of the circuits, the software and so forth, uh, we can, with a much smaller team, with a domain expert, whether it be a mechanical engineer, aerospace engineer, medical doctor, environmental engineer, biomedical engineer, all working to create a definition and then turning right around and implement it in the lab view. So a much smaller team uh, can build the systems. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen. It's amazing. Every day I see an example of somebody who's taken our platform and done something truly incredible. And today you'll be uh, seeing some of those on stage. So once again, we're able to deliver the return of Edison, the ability of innovators to be innovating and be very successful in their invention process. And finally, a note on time. And tomorrow you're going to see a, hear a profound treatise from Jeff uh, on time, probably uh, something that will really stand the test of time in terms of being a very deep uh, description of it. We've talked about time at the global level with uh, GPS, time across back planes, time in the time loop with LabVIEW. So time is very much a part of what we are about and creating a language with time integrated so to benefit in a time for innovation cutting those cycle times and innovation. So once again, it's about time, time for innovation. Thank you.